but at least you got some exercise. Um, <laughs> Which has been the purpose of today's talk. You see this stuff just, it's very natural after a while. You know, you get really good at it. Um, okay, put your hands up if you have a question. Um, and I will pick you in order of attractiveness. Uh, mm, mm, mm. It's very political now, you see. Uh, okay, what am I feeling? I'm feeling like a scruffy aesthetic today. Uh, I'm going to go with the guy in the yellow. Because I like the look. Little little scruffiness today. You look like an anime fan. Are you an anime fan? No. Um, what is your opinion on the recent two cent per ounce soda tax that was implemented in Boulder? Are you kidding me? I am not. Oh my gosh. So the, only, the, the, the moment I knew I would love Sarah Palin forever um, was the big gulp thing. And everyone's sort of very loftily sort of scoffing at, oh, God, it's so theatrical. But I loved it. I loved it. She's just like, fuck you. <laughs> um, I did this at Clemson. It was my birthday. Was it Clemson? Yeah, it was Clemson. We did a show, and they banned pictures of Harambe from campus. So, of course, I, I festooned the stage with pictures of gorillas. Um, don't say it. I'm hoping I get my account back. Um, so the... Any kind of syntax is disproportionately hits the working classes. Um, and although I'm a believer in regressive taxation, because I think that you should encourage people to do better and be better, basically after a certain point, you know, you get to sort of 200,000 a year, I think you should be taken out of tax entirely. Because um, you pay enough in sales, well, you pay enough in sales taxes and you contribute so much to the economy already, creating jobs and whatever, that I think you should encourage people to be rich. It's good. I mean, rich people, we don't pay any tax anyway. Um, why, make us, why make us go through the charade of employing vast armies of lawyers and accountants. Just don't charge us. It's how it works anyway. And you know, you have like a low rate, like a 20% 20 20 tax rate maybe for people who don't have much money and it tapers off. It encourages people to get better. It encourages people to get promotions, to get pay rises. It'd be fantastic. So I believe in regressive taxes. I don't believe in sin taxes. Because I don't believe in overly punitive taxes um, that, uh, that punish people for the few pleasures they have in life. Um, you know, in, in, a, in a world where globalization, globalism is, is robbing, in particular, the white and black working classes of any, ho uh, any hope of, of a reasonable job um, in any of the service industries, any of the you know, heavy industry, that kind of thing. I hope that, some, that Trump will bring some of those jobs back, but in the absence of those, when people are stuck on welfare and all the rest of it, the meanest, cruelest, most vindictive, school marmish thing you could do, is of course what liberals always do, um, is to start going for their fucking soda? kidding me? Like cigarette taxes, alcohol taxes, I'd get rid of all of them. Um, I'd, I'd abolish them all um, and just have a very, very low basic rate of income tax that tapers off to nothing. Um, the regressive taxation, it's good. Uh, let's go to, you look like, uh, no. Uh, <laughs> see, it's fun. I can do what I want. You by the wall over there in the hat. Yeah, you. I'm going over there again. Go on, run, Andrew. All right. Thank you for coming to Boulder. I actually grew up here. I was a liberal most of my life until I was about uh, 19. When reality kicked in. When reality right. kicked in. Well, yeah. So when you live in the circus, you wake up. So, um, <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> you have so, your fair share of bearded ladies for sure. <laughs> So they kept running a story in the newspaper about how the Dems were upset that they were going to be contributing for audio and other expenses. Uh -huh. But ironically, there's a transgender with the appropriate name of Laverne Cox, who is also hosting Imagine a show here. Imagine keeping your surname, Cox. You're <laughs> asking for it, aren't you? Uh, sorry, Carol. It's not misleading. Okay, so a simultaneous... <laughs> <laughs> Simultaneously, the school is giving him or her $52,200, but nobody made a noise about that. So I is was that just a speaking fee? Finally, I, I finally. So. I mean, how much does scissors cost? Um, <laughs> <laughs> at most, 
If you were feeling generous, you'd get her a bottle of scotch and some garden secateurs. Um, so what, what, what's your take on that? Well, I don't charge speaking fees, um, because I think if you have to charge 19-year-olds to listen to your opinions, something is wrong with you. Um, and I find it distasteful and grubby when rich, famous celebrities eat up student funds um, when they don't need to. She doesn't need the money. She's a very, very wealthy woman or man, as you please. I don't care anymore. I don't care anymore. They're going to call me a transphobe, whatever, so I'll just use whichever one comes to me first. Um, she doesn't need the money, and it strikes me as grasping, you know, to sort of... This is, this is, American higher education is a very rich industry. You know, there's a lot of money around. And there will always be opportunistic people who want to attach themselves to that fire hose of free cash. Um, I think if you are actually producing or doing or being something elsewhere in life, that this should be a sort of icing on the cake, the sort of thing you do for fun, you know? Um, you actually create a product or do something else in the real world, you can come and talk to college students about what you think about things on the basis of your experience. I don't see it, I, I just, I hate it when conservative speakers do it. Um, they don't come on the sorts of fees that liberal speakers do it. I find it interesting though, and this is the last thing I'll say about it, that they have capitulated now. They have realized they can't stop me from speaking. So what is their strategy? I know, we'll get a black crossdresser. That'll fuck with him. A famous, a famous black crossdresser. That will leech out the attention. Well, what's the story on Boulder tonight? It ain't Laverne Cox. It's the protest. That's at my event, of course. But, But this is good news because it means they have um, it means they have given in. It means they have given up trying to stop me from coming. They're still going to put little, you know, like last minute security fees on the students. They're still gonna be slimy, disreputable, slippery cunts. They're still gonna punish their students for being conservative, but they have finally admitted that their First Amendment responsibilities uh, require them to do everything possible to allow me to entertain you for an hour or two. Um, good, and if the worst, and if the best, if the best they can come up with, the most A-list attraction they can come up with is some sort of you know minor star from a Netflix show who has the right identity politics credentials. Well, good. I think that means we're winning, don't you? Okay. Next up, I'm going to go with. You've been sitting very politely and calmly, sort of still waters run deep. I feel sure you're about to torpedo me with a terrible question, <laughs> something I can't answer. There's a, very, there's, a very, there's, a, there's a sort of oasis of calm politeness around this man. He's about to call me a monster. No, go on. Oh, no. You, you can on. answer the question. This is for my friend back in Jersey. Mm -hmm. He wants me to ask you, is feminine penis gay? Is what? Feminine penis. Feminine penis. Well, I just figured you'd know. Just kidding. Just kidding. I got the mic, all right. <laughs> um, I don't really know what that means, but I can tell you that traps are gay. Um, <laughs> let's go. Let's let's move on. Uh, in the yeah, you're very enthusiastic. Stand up. Let me look at you before I decide. Yeah, okay, yeah. You see, life is not, uh, you know, a, a, a merit, life is not, a, is not a, a level playing field. Life is a meritocracy, and so are my events. Yo, I'm, I, I was just kidding. I just wanted to know if you thought I was attractive or not. Yeah, I do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> All right, more attractive people. Hmm. What about the lady here in the purple with the nice hair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't do that. Is that what you... Hello. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Hello, Angel. Um, I was just wondering, um, do you have any advice for younger people that tend to be more on the conservative side who are shamed for their views and told mm -hmm. that they're woman haters for being not feminist? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yes, and it is this. I know you're scared, but grow a backbone. And stick up for yourselves. Because if you, if you attack them head on, they're bullies and they will crumble. Nobody can resist the truth wrapped in a good joke, as I always like to say. And there's something utterly retarded about somebody who thinks that disagreement about a particular fringe political ideology means you hate a whole gender. It's ridiculous. Say so. Tell them that. It's ridiculous to say, if you don't agree with the babyish, theatrical, destructive tactics of Black Lives Matter, that you hate black people. Ludicrous. Say so. It's the sort of thing you just don't hear. Like CNN. Did, nobody says that on CNN. Nobody. It's just assumed when they have a conservative guest that they must be a racist. You say, no, I'm not a racist. Your, you know, your view is ludicrous. Here are some facts, and here's a joke. By the way, you're fat. Um, <laughs> these people have lied to and lied about you for decades. It was time to take some of the power back, and nothing bad happens, as I always like to say, as people have heard me say often, nothing bad happens when you tell these people to go fuck themselves. Nothing bad happens. Um, and you... Nobody in this room is going to completely sign up to the entire Republican Party platform. It would be weird if you did. But if you find that on examination of the evidence and consideration of your own moral compass and, and maybe your faith, maybe other things, you're mostly conservative, mostly Republican, in what, whatever that means. You've arrived through reason, through logic, through fact, um, perhaps, through, perhaps through faith too, to a perfectly reasonable, respectable set of opinions that half the country holds. There's no reason to feel ashamed of that. There's no reason ever to feel bad about that. You may feel like the minority on campus, but you're clearly not. Most people go to college now. Certainly most of the people you're going to be working with in your life go to college. Half of them will vote Republican. They're just quieter. Because they don't want to burn the world like they think the world's burnt them. Conservatives on the whole, quite happy people characterized as mean, vicious, angry, gun-clinging racists by the media. But look at the difference between the atmosphere and energy and you know, the joviality, the, the comradeship in this room versus the dour misery of a feminist lecture hall. <laughs> or the sort of empty, sinister vacuousness that I'm sure is playing itself out in Laverne Cox's audience. You know, yes, queen, you go, sister, you know? <laughs> Thank you, baby. Um, you're good, decent people. Don't let anybody suggest to you otherwise. And if they try to suggest to you otherwise, um, you know, the, the number one way to, to shut down a liberal is to ask for evidence and example, because they can never, ever produce any. I have had <laughs> Donald Trump, daddy, has determined. I made that. I made that up because it annoys everyone. Um, he's realised that he will never get the press to treat him fairly, so he instead just trolls the fuck out of them, um, which is wonderful. But. Occasionally, I like to sort of ritually humiliate progressive journalists. Um, so I've just sort of engaged, I had my publicist engage in a sort of um, uh, blitzkrieg. Um, uh, if they go use a German word, must be a neo Nazi. Um, in, a sort of, in a sort of blitzkrieg, it's a metaphor, um, on uh, USA Today, NBC News, Salon, uh, Fortune, all of them have had to issue corrections for calling me ridiculous things. Because we asked them one simple question. Can you provide a single piece of evidence? And you will find that 98% of social justice claims crumble uh, in the face of that one question. Um, <laughs> at the, this will be the last question. I have to be very careful to pick an attractive person. Yeah, in the green. Yeah. Sorry, I've sort of tended to the right um, <laughs> this evening. Hi, Milo. 
Thanks for gracing us with your presence tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You see, like he's following the pattern which none of the rest of you fucks did. Compliment, compliment, question. <laughs> I, How many times do I have to say it? Every single Q and every single fucking Q and A. Compliment, compliment, question is not that hard. I'm not done. <laughs> How can uh, I help you, Angel? <laughs> First off, I'd just like to say that your bling looks absolutely fabulous tonight. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. I was wondering, how do you deal with people when you're debating them that like to play the definition game, changing the definition of things like racist to involve systems of oppression and mm -hmm. alt-right to mean neo-Nazi? Yeah, well, I mean, I wrote, um, as you know, I tend toward modesty and humility in all things. But I wrote what was, in, it was indisputably the most influential piece of political journalism um, of, of the whole of 2016 with my colleague. Uh, I did. Um, them's facts, ho. Um, I wrote um, with, with Alan Bakari, uh, An Establishment Conservative's Guide to the Alt-Right. And what we were trying to do is sketch out the contours of this exciting new vast movement. And I wanted to, sorry? And, and, and Pepe's place in it. Um, green cartoon frog sends them running into their safe spaces and, and they're surprised they lost an election. Um, but what I was trying to do was paint the sort of contours of the movement as I saw it. And it does have an unsavory element in it, for sure. My assessment was it was like 2 to 5% maybe, maybe less, maybe just 2%. And there were also cultural libertarians, people who were really concerned with the free speech stuff. There were traditional Republican-based voters who, you know, like a bit of mischief, sort of raucous bawdy humor, don't like being told what jokes they can make, and really care about immigration and trade. There are all sorts of different dimensions to this. And there were young college-educated people like you who enjoyed Pepe, sort of the, the trolly, meme -y nature of online discourse, which is kind of the world I come from, too. That's kind of the, the bit of it that I identify with the most. And I tried to sort of define that. But the media decided they weren't having that. They wanted to define it as racist, just the 2%, but then apply that term to all of you and me. This is sort of weird distortions of language that they engage in. If you, I suppose if you find yourself in the unfortunate position of, of being in the same room um, as somebody who thinks that stupidly, finish the conversation quickly so you don't catch it. Um, and bef <laughs> before you do that, um, I would just, just break it down like I did, you know? They, they fall apart in the face of sensible, reasonable explanations. Because their, their, their thinking rests on, you know, on sloppy assumptions and feelings. I was asked by the BBC, um, by this idiotic geriatric reporter, are you a white nationalist? And I said, no. And then I explained what the assumptions were behind the question that he was asking me. I said, you see, I'm rather fond of America. I think American values are great. I think the Constitution's awesome. Um, First and Second Amendment, really cool. Um, you know, property rights in... I think it's amazing, and all I ever talk about is how amazing I think it is. And the fact that, you know, property rights, democracy, freedom of speech, capitalism, you know, these things are the best ingredients for the best society. These things make countries great. And the countries that don't have them are shit. The countries that do have them are great. This country has the most of them, which is why it's the best country in the history of human civilization. Now, what, what he was seeking to do is out of nowhere associate that with race. Suggesting that if you are a Western supremacist, which I'm perfectly happy to admit I am, you must also be a white supremacist. Well, no, I don't talk about skin color very often. I don't really talk about race at all. I did one talk about it. The only time I talk about skin color is, is in nightclubs in the bedroom. Um, uh, I don't really care, I mean, I don't care at all about skin color, but I do care about ideas and I do care about values. And when you seek to stigmatize certain value systems, uh, as being associated with skin colors and, and certain prejudices and isms and bigotries. You're doing something ugly, sloppy, and horrendous, and, real, and, and, and something intellectually bankrupt. And when you, instead of, uh, instead of answering the question they asked you, break it down like that, they run for the fucking hills. <laughs> they run for the hills, partly because they don't, in many cases, realize they were doing it. They just think if you, you know, anyone who flies a flag must be a racist because that's what everyone always told me. My professors told me that and the media told me that. Think critically, logically, simply. Break things down to their simplest elements. What is he saying? What are the assumptions this is based on? Why is it garbage? And take a step back from the discussion and explain to your interlocutor why 
the question they've asked you is preposterous. Um, they will leave the room quickly. Um, and if they don't leave the room and they admit they're wrong, and you, you, you might then be in a situation where you can have a productive discussion. Um, I am increasingly skeptical that anybody on the modern progressive left is able or willing to have a constructive discussion about anything that really matters, whether it is sex or race or, 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 or orientation or anything else. Um, they don't care about science anymore. Um, they're not interested. They want to recategorize things for this sort of bizarre... It's a sort of bizarre crusade they have to tear down all the institutions that made this country great and that provided them with all the opportunities they have. I mean, this is the best country you can imagine to be born a woman or to be born gay. Like, you'd want to be born in America. But women and gays on the progressive left are trying to tear down precisely the things about America that made it great, like capitalism and freedom of speech. It's ridiculous. Absolute lunacy. Point it out to them. Point it out to them. Um, because very often these people are sort of acting reflexively out of maxims, out of... Um, you know, sayings that they've just been taught to, to repeat. Because for 30 years, they haven't had strong opposition. Well, they have strong opposition now. Um, there is a nascent nationalist, populist, rowdy, meme trolly, um, mischievous, young conservative uprising in this country. And it is conservatives and libertarians. And, and you know, you... I will leave you with a, an optim on an optimistic note, um, having assaulted your eyeballs with pictures of Lena Dunham for, for long enough tonight. I'll leave you on, with an optimistic, uh, on an optimistic note, and it is this. For 30 years, the powers of political correctness and social justice have waged war on popular culture in this country. They have assaulted music, publishing, Hollywood, the media, everything. But things are about to change. They're literally... In the, in the couple of years you have ahead of you when you're at college and starting out your career, you in this room and everybody your age is going to be instrumental in a colossal cultural pushback. Everyone just assumed that conservatives, thank you, you can hold this for just a second, I'm getting there. Um, everyone just assumed that conservatives had given up the culture war, and they did. All of the establishment Republicans, all of the, you know, your parents' generation fucked you because they didn't bother to fight. They just handed the universities over. They handed Hollywood over. They handed over all of these massive organs, huge cultural institutions, a huge you know, social power. They just gave it to the left. Well, you're not doing that. You're voting for somebody like Trump, of all people. You are standing up. You are laughing in the face of their lunacy. You are coming to talks like this. You are doing something about it, and you are the first generation in perhaps two or three generations of libertarians and conservatives to do something about it. So you... Congratulations, you are the answer to, your, to the question. Um, just keep fucking at it. Um, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to have been here. Thank you.